Okay, so today I want to talk to you about solving some problems related to Newton's first, second, and third law. We're going to start off with this worksheet. The, all these worksheets come off of my website. You can go online. Their, their titles are at the top. They're under your assignments in your class. So Newton's second law, one. This is a basic uh, worksheet related to Newton's second law and how Newton's second law uh, can be solved. As uh, we can see here, we can solve the equation uh, for different uh, components. So uh, F equals MA. Uh, we can solve it for A by dividing by M, and we get F over M equals A. Basic algebra. Um, but let's get into some, some problems with some numbers. So question number seven says, how much force is required to hold a two-kilogram ball straight up over your head? So if we think about that, we have a mass of two kilograms. We know that the acceleration due to gravity, G, is acting on that object. So the acceleration is G, which is equal to negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we can solve for F because we know that F is equal to MA. And so F is equal to 2 times negative 9.8. So the force acting on this is going to be negative 19.6 newtons. The, uh, if you imagine this, here's a person, um, their arms, maybe their arms are up like this, and they uh, have this barbell. Um, so their arms are like this with their barbell held up in the air. And uh, the, the uh, weights are pulling down and the person is pushing up so we'd say okay the person's pushing up at 19.6 newtons so the force that the person's pushing up with is 19.6 newtons up the uh, next question is question number nine so a force of 3420 newtons so f is equal to 3420 newtons is applied to an object and produces an acceleration of 6.8 meters per second squared what's the mass of the object and so we know that acceleration is equal to force over mass. So mass is equal to force over acceleration. Just a little algebra there where we've uh, multiplied both sides by m and divided both sides by a. And so we plug this in. We plug in the numbers we have: three thousand four hundred and twenty divided by six point eight. And uh, when we do that, three thousand four hundred twenty divided by six point eight we end up with a mass of about 503 kilograms. So you're able to get the mass. You should try a few more problems on this worksheet and make sure that you are okay solving them. If you have any questions, let me know. The next worksheet that we are going to go to is one on mass versus weight. And as we talked about in class, the uh, mass of an object um, is an inherent property while well, the weight of the object is not an inherent property. Uh, the the uh, weight of an object is equal to the mass of the object times gravity. And so ultimately, Newton's second law is applied here. The mass is based on the number of constituent mass particles that are um, giving the atoms their mass. And so the more, the more mass an atom has, the more mass the whole overall object has. And therefore, mass is not going to change because the number of electrons, protons, and neutrons in an object are not going to change. And therefore, the masses of those objects is not going to change either. And so we end up solving for weight, which is inherent because gravity does change. And so in this, we can see some examples of this. You could solve, you, you have basically six problems here to solve. Uh, for example, the uh, fifth problem here says the weight of an object is equal to 50 newtons. Kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. Um, the mass is 10 kilograms, so the acceleration is going to equal force over mass, which is 50 over 10. So the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared, wherever this object is is located. You could solve for the other boxes as you go along. We just solved for this one here. But uh, let's pick some additional problems. Um, I am not going to make you convert, so if you want to get 15 pounds into 
kilograms, you can do that, but I'm not, I'm not going to make you convert. So it says here, for example, number nine, if a rock has a mass of uh, 700 kilograms on Earth, what would its mass be on the moon where gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared? It's a trick question because the mass doesn't change. So the mass on the moon is going to be still 700 kilograms. Now the weight on the moon would be different. So the weight on Earth would equal 700 times 9.8, while the weight on the moon would equal 700 times 1.6. And when we do 700 times 1.6 in our calculators, we end up with about 7,000 newtons. Sorry, I said that wrong. We ended up about 11,000 newtons. I did, did that wrong. So it's 11,000 newtons. So 11,200 to be precise. 11,000 newtons. There you go. So we're able to solve for the weight of objects. Again, try a couple. If you're doing well, then we move on. The next worksheet gets us in deeper into Newton's second law, um, where we are going to deal with some more challenging problems. So here we have number three. A, uh, a car weighs 15,000 newtons and is traveling at 27 meters per second. The driver immediately applies the brakes to the car, and the car comes to rest in 885 meters. What's the net force acting on the car? Now, this does require a little bit of um, a little bit of your kinematic knowledge, but one of the things that a lot of people get wrong here is they think the force is 15,000 newtons. The weight of the car is 15,000 newtons. The car has a weight of 1, 15,000 newtons. The car is moving along at 27 meters per second when it comes to a stop. So we need to figure out the acceleration. So the acceleration of the car is going to equal v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2 x. This comes from our third kinematic. And so the acceleration is going to equal 27 squared. It's 27 squared divided by 2 times 85, which is 170. And we end up with about 4.3 meters per second squared. Um, and uh, that's going to be, neg that's going to be um, negative. It's slowing down. So 0 minus the uh, 27 squared over uh, 2 times 85, and we end up with, again, negative 4.3 meters per second squared. Now, the force is going to not be 15, because it's actually asking what's the force, and some people do put down the 15. We need to find the mass. So the mass of the object is 15, the mass is equal to the weight divided by gravity, so 15,000 divided by 9.8. So 15,000 divided by 9.8 gives us a value of uh, 1,531 kilograms. And so knowing the acceleration and knowing the mass, we can find the force. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So the force is equal to 1,531 times negative 4.3. And you end up with about negative 66,000 newtons. About. We have a number of other problems like this. Um, as I mentioned to you, I'm not going to have you dig into kinematics. So if you want to try a couple of these, but I wouldn't get bogged down in here having to do the kinematics over and over and over again. The... Next worksheet I want you to take a look at is Newton's Third Law. Um, this one I want you to think through. Um, and so it says here, for each of the following forces, give the reaction force required by Newton's Third Law. So a hammer hits a nail, force of a hammer on a nail. So when the hammer hits the nail, the nail must hit the hammer. The force of gravity pulling down on a book. Well, gravity is pulling down on the book, but the book is pulling up on gravity, on the earth. The force of a helicopter blade pushing down in the air. So the helicopter blade pushes the air down. As it's spinning, the air gets pushed down. The helicopter goes up. The force of air resistance acting on a thrown ball. So the ball's trying to fly forward. 
the air resistance is pushing back, slowing it down. So we can see these action reaction pairs. Um, another example, of this is number four. If a small sports car collides head on with a massive truck, which vehicle experiences a greater impact? Which vehicle experiences a greater acceleration? Explain your answer. So when we take a look at this problem, uh, what we find is that the uh, uh, both vehicles, according to Newton's third law, will have equal and opposite forces. A car hits a truck, a truck hits a car. Their forces would have to be the same. And so if their forces are the same, that doesn't necessarily mean their accelerations are the same. So I have two objects colliding together. When they collide together, one can't strike the other without the other striking back. So the uh, F1 equals negative F2. So they're going to be equal magnitude opposite in direction hitting each other but the acceleration is gonna equal the force over the mass. And so even though they have the same exact force, the, the, since the truck is more massive, it has a smaller acceleration. There are a number of problems like that for you to look through here as well. The last worksheet are similar to the problems that we were working on in class. And I'm gonna go through two of these and leave the other two for you to do uh, on your own. And so, and you really should do these before I see you the next time. And so in the first one, block one has a mass of 10 kilograms. Block two has a mass of five kilograms. The force that pushes the blocks below is 45 newtons. What is the force between box one and two? So the acceleration between the boxes is equal to the force divided by the mass. So it's 45 divided by 10 plus 5, so that's going to give us 3 meters per second squared. Now, when I'm pushing to the right, the 45 Newton force is applied to this wall. Some of the force is used up moving the, the number 2 box. The rest of the force pushes onto the box, uh, the next box, which is box 1 here, making that move. Both boxes have exactly the same acceleration. They have to. And so that means that the, the force that uh, is pushing box one, box one is 10 kilograms, the force pushing box one to make it move at three meters per second squared is 30 newtons. And so the force pushing against box one is 30 newtons. If there was another box here, the force that I am pushing against this with is would be equal to the force to move box one plus the new box because both boxes force has to pass through the wall located located right here. The second problem, we've switched the direction of the force. So we still have the same acceleration. We have a, a 45 newton force accelerating three kilogram, uh, accelerating a, a 15 kilograms of mass. So the acceleration is three. But this time, when we get to the same location, the same wall, we don't have two pushing on one, but one pushing on two. And that means because box number two has less mass, that it is um, needing less force to move with an acceleration of three meters per second squared. And so in that particular case, uh, what we find is that the force is equal to the amount of mass that has to be pushed to the right from that point. So that in this case is only five kilograms. If there were more boxes, I'd add together all their masses. So five kilograms times the uh, acceleration of three. And so what we find is that the force is equal to 15 newtons. The next problem is the birthday cake problem. This problem is similar. You could calculate the weight of each box. The weight of each box is equal to mg. In this case, I've given them to you. So this is 20 new. Um, no, I didn't. I gave you them in kilograms. I have to be careful here. 20 kilograms. So um, the weight would be equal to 20 times 9.8, which is going to equal 196 newtons. So this is the 196 newton box. Um, the next one is 15. So the force weight is equal to 15 times 9.8. So that's going to equal... 100 and, um, 140, uh, 100 and, uh, sorry, <clears throat> yeah, 147 newtons. And the last one is a 12 kilogram box. And uh, 12 times 9.8 gives us a value of 1,000, 
100, I'm sorry, uh, 107, it's not 1,000, it's 117.6. There's a decimal spot there. I was reading it 1,176, there's a decimal spot. And so we have our boxes, each one pushing down. So if each box is pushing down, that means the floor has to push up with a force equal to the sum of these. So the floor is pushing up with a force of 196 plus 147 plus 112.6. And um, that's the force of the floor, not force of friction. And uh, then the force of the top of the first box is just going to be these two numbers and the force at the top of the second box is just the last number. Um, and so we, or I'd, I'd circle that wrong, it would be this number here, it's 117.6, 196 is the bottom one. Um, and so you would be able to calculate from there. There is another set of uh, problems down below, you definitely wanna try those. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.